some people think you're transphobic. Yeah. Other people say, hang on, she's raising some legitimate concerns. Why is she being cancelled? Mm. Other people say, no, she's making us fear for our identity. Yeah. That's just two very different positions. Mm. Let's put it in your words. I'm not remotely transphobic. I can't imagine wanting to discriminate or hate a group of people just for who they are and how they want to live. It's a bit like saying, you know, I don't like drinks or I don't like trousers. You don't dismiss a group of things like that. And I never would. And I haven't. And what might, you know, some people sort of interview me and say, you've been castigated because of your views on trans rights. I don't talk about trans rights because I think it's not my place to talk about trans rights. Trans people have got some great organisations and they're very good at representing their rights and that is just as it should be. Trans rights are the same rights as everyone else. Um, but what concerns me is that there is a slight conflict in some cases between trans rights and women's rights. Women's rights are why I came to Parliament and why I'm sitting here because women are now visible in Parliament and I grew up in a very strong feminist household and what really concerns me are the rights of women to have privacy and space and the necessity to be in a women's refuge not shared with someone with a male body. I mean rape is a crime that is only committed with mainly one weapon and that is a male body and I want to protect women from having to be in the same space if it is really vital to them that they're not. And that isn't about transphobia, it's about making sure that self-ID, which is a little bit of the trans issue, is just not in conflict with women's biological rights. That's it. You know, I think we should be able to talk about that without being called transphobic.